In this section, we'll be writing inequalities. Uh, we'll be given an expression, a word problem, and we want to write an appropriate inequality that describes the given expression. Um, just like in uh, writing equations in a previous section, um, it's very important and often taxing to uh, write a word problem into a given inequality. So we want to be sure that we get a good handle on this because it's extremely important. So what we're going to do is we're going to take each, each expression and um, we're going to identify some key words that might be of help. So let's take a look at the first one. The sum of 8 and a number is greater than or equal to 8. All right, well, the first one that stands out to me is that we have a sum, the sum of 8. So we're going to have 8 plus something, the sum of 8 and something else, um, the sum of 8 and a number. Now, we're not told what this number is, so it's actually going to be a variable. So we'll just say um, 8 plus n, n for number, is greater than or equal to, we know that this is the symbol for greater than or equal to, 11. So the sum of 8 and a number is greater than or equal to 11 is written by this inequality. 8 plus n is greater than or equal to 11, depending on what the number is. All right, pretty straightforward. Let's do another one. The distance from Houston, Texas to Austin, Texas is less than 250 miles. All right, um, in, this sec in this example, we're going to be dealing with distance. So we're going to let d equal distance. So the distance from Houston to Austin is less than 250 miles. So D is going to be less than 250. All right, so we're just using our distance here and we're using what we know about the distance from two points. Um, and the distance is gonna be less than a certain amount. So in this case, it's 250. All right, let's see. Paul needs to earn at least an 85 on his test to receive a B in his algebra class. So let's go ahead and let x equal um, Paul's test grade. And I guess we're talking about a final exam, but we're talking about Paul's test grade. We're gonna let that equal x. So what do we know about Paul's test grade? Well, we know that it needs to be at least an 85. All right, the rest of it is, is, is just extra information, but when we're talking about an inequality, um, that we want to write. Um, we know that x needs to be at least 85. So when we're talking about at least, we're going to be talking about greater than or equal to. Um, his, his grade can be 85 on the test, so we have an equal sign, um, but it has to be greater, greater than or equal to 85. So we're talking about all the values from 85 and up. So x, Paul's text, test grade, needs to be greater than or equal to 85. All right, very intuitive. Um, if we think about it, we can actually, that one's pretty simple. Um, let's say a boy needs to be 40 inches or more to ride the Ferris wheel. Okay, so we're talking about height here. So let's go ahead and label a variable H as the boy's height. Boy's height. So what do we know about H? What do we know about the boy's height? Well, we know that it needs to be um, 40 inches or more to ride the Ferris wheel. So H, so in order for him to be able to ride the Ferris wheel, his height H needs to be at least 40 inches. So greater than or equal to 40 inches. Um, if he's 40 inches, he can ride the Ferris wheel. So H can be equal to 40, but uh, it can't be less than 40. So all the values greater than or equal to 40 will satisfy um, this equation to ride the Ferris wheel. So H is greater than or equal to 40 uh, is our inequality for this situation. Let's look at another one. Um, let's say the, a restaurant can hold no more than 75 customers. So we actually saw something similar to this in a previous section. So let's go ahead and label a variable C as the number of customers number of customers we're going to abbreviate customers okay so what do we know about the number of customers well for this particular restaurant to be open it can hold no more than 75 so c can be um, no more than 75 it can be 75 so we know we're going to have an equal sign but we're talking about all the values less than 75 as well um, that will be safe for the restaurant um, if we're talking about uh, fire hazard or whatnot C can be less than or equal to 75. 
So it's safe for the restaurant to have up to 75 customers for it to be open. All right, let's look at the next one. The sum of two consecutive integers is less than 32. Here we're gonna have to think a little bit. So we're talking about two consecutive integers. So if we let n equal, let's get a different color here. If we let n equal the first integer, and we can write an inequality in terms of the first integer, we can solve the inequality, or not in this section, but in a previous section, once we have the tools to, we can solve this inequality and plug this in back into the inequality to find the second integer. So let's see what this looks like. So we have the term sum and the term two consecutive integers. So we know we're gonna have two integers, so two times n, and what do we know about the second integer? If it's consecutive integers, we're going to have, the second one's gonna be plus one. If we're talking about two consecutive integers and the first one is, let's say, 20, well, the next one, the consecutive integer, is gonna be 21. It's just gonna be one more than the previous one. So we have two integers, so two times n, which is the first, um, the second one's gonna be plus one. All right, be sure you understand how we're getting this because this is extremely important. We gotta think about this a little bit. And then we know that um, the two, sum of two consecutive integers, this expression here, needs to be less than 32. So less than 32, that's simple part. But this left side, we need to think about a little bit and understand how we came up with this. Let's look at another one. Let's say a strand of bacteria grows at an annual rate of 1%. The total growth at the end of the year is greater than or equal to 1 million bacteria. All right, so let's let B equal the number of bacteria. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about a quantity of bacteria. Now, what do we actually want our inequality to solve for? What do we want to say about our inequality? We want the total growth at the end of the year, and we want it to be greater than or equal to one million bacteria. Um, well, from here we know that uh, the right side of the inequality is going to be greater than or equal to 1 million. We know the right side. So we have greater than or equal to 1 million. So we need to know an expression on the left side. Well, we're talking about, um, we're not talking about the total amount of bacteria at the end of the year. We're talking about the total growth. And we know that the bacteria grows at an annual rate of 1% per year. So we can say that 0 0.01, which is the same as 1%, times the number of bacteria that we started the year with. Okay, so we're again, we're not talking about the total number of bacteria at the end of the year, that would actually be a little bit different. But we're talking about just the growth. How much did it increase by the end of the year? And that's 1% of the previous, uh, the, or the amount of bacteria that we started off with. So 0 0.01 times B. And this needs to be greater than or equal to 1 million bacteria to solve our application here. All right, let's 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 go ahead and squeeze in one more. Let's say you buy tacos at a restaurant. A taco costs 99 cents and you have at most $4 to spend. We wanna write an inequality for the number of tacos that you can buy. So let's go ahead and label a variable T as the number of tacos. Number of tacos. Okay, so we know that we have at most $4 to spend. So we can spend no more than $4, which will give us the inequality less than or equal to four. Okay, however many tacos we buy, um, we can spend no more than $4. We can spend $4, so we have the equal sign, but we can't spend more than $4 because we don't have more than $4. So it's gonna, the amount we can spend is going to be less than or equal to four. Now let's figure out the left side. Um, a taco costs 99 cents, so our cost is going to be 99 cents times the number of tacos we buy, so 0 0.99 times T, T for tacos. So the number of tacos times 99 cents has to be less than or equal to 4, because we only have $4. So make sure uh, you go over this uh, video again, especially the last three examples. Um, these three examples is more than just identifying keywords and simply writing out an in a short inequality. These we had actually had to do a little bit of thinking about. 
Um, we had to label a variable and then find a relation um, for the left side of that variable. And then um, we can just pick out uh, keywords uh, for actually the right side. So that the right side's pretty simple. We need to think about the left side of these three inequalities um, a little bit more. And like I said in the beginning, uh, just like when we're going from word problems to writing an equation to describe the word problem, um, it's very important to be able to go from a word problem or a real world application and actually write an appropriate inequality that describes that word problem. So sometimes it's actually taxing, you have to think about it a little bit, but um, it's extremely important, it's the most underestimated um, ability to have in all of algebra and actually all of mathematics. So, but this is the ultimate goal that we want to get to. We want to have a real world application and translate that into either an equation or in this case an inequality. And then uh, we'll look in um, the next few sections about actually how to solve those inequalities. So I'll see you soon.